Hi there, everyone. Whether you're meeting us here today or whether you're joining us at a later date, welcome to discussion, workbook discussions uh, of A Course in Miracles that's sponsored by the Foundation for Inner Peace. Um, my name is Johanna van Zwet. I'm a volunteer with the Foundation for Inner Peace, and I will be facilitating today. Before we get started, I would like to read a pray prayer, which is taken from the workbook, and I'll share my screen. I hope it works now. There you go. Let's see. And I'll, I'll, I'll read it out loud. And after I've read the prayer, we'll have a, um, like a minute of quiet. Lesson 221. Peace to my mind. Let all my thoughts be still. Father, I come to you today to seek the peace that you alone can give. I come in silence, in the quiet of my heart, the deep recesses of my mind. I wait and listen for your voice. My father, speak to me today. I come to hear your voice in silence and in certainty and love. Sure, you will hear my call and answer me. Now do we wait in quiet. God is here because we wait together. I am sure that he will speak to you and you will hear. Accept my confidence for it is yours. Our minds are joined. We wait with one intent to hear our father's answer to our call, to let our thoughts be still and find his peace, to hear him speak to us of what we are and to reveal himself unto his son. Amen. Hello. All right. So that was the silence. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's okay. That's fine. No problem. No, you're before eager to start. start. Yes, before we start, though, I just want to tell you that was a perfect, perfect prayer. Those, the first line of that is something I say almost, I don't know how many times a day. Uh, that's Annetta Bowen uh, song, by the way. Uh, okay, so you hear the melody in your mind, right? I hear it in my head and I, and I yeah. feel it in my heart. So thank you oh, for that prayer. Lovely, lovely. Well, it's in the course. It's... Um, it's, it's, it's it sure is a, like, a, like a storehouse of, of gems. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, I'll do another share screen, and this time it'll be um, some of the paragraphs of Lesson 29 that I selected. Um, here it is. There you go. Shall I, um, shall I just read it? And then after sure. I've read the couple paragraphs, we'll, uh, we can talk about it if we feel like it. Lesson yeah. 29. I've, I've just selected a couple of, uh, two, a couple of sentences. God is in everything I see. The idea for today explains why you can see all purpose in everything. It explains why nothing is separate by itself or in itself. And it explains why nothing you see means anything. In fact, it explains every idea we have used thus far and all subsequent ones as well. Today's idea is the whole basis for vision. We emphasized yesterday that a table shares the purpose of the universe. Yesterday, that's lesson 28. And what shares the purpose of the universe shares the purpose of its creator. Try then today to begin to look, how, to, be, to learn how to look on all things with love, appreciation, and open-mindedness. You do not see them now. Would you know what is in them? Nothing is as, as it appears to you. Its holy purpose 
stands beyond your little range. When vision has shown you the holiness that lights up the world, you will understand today's idea perfectly, and you will not understand how you could ever have found it difficult. What comes to my mind when I read this is the enormous distance between vision and my current state of seeing. It's just immense. When vision has shown you the holiness that lights up the world, you will understand today's idea perfectly. That lights up the world. I, I can't say I've seen that. I've had moments where, you know, when perhaps when I when I was overjoyed or I felt embraced by love, but I can't say that I've seen the world light up. So there's still some ways to go. I guess. Let me see what I have in my, in my, uh, I've got a book, like a little book in which I collect some of the thoughts for the lessons. And sometimes I like to, to, to go back to what I wrote down some time ago. Mm. God is in everything I see. If you replace the word God with life, you get life is in everything I see. And the reason life is in everything I see is that everything is life. My identity lies with source, while at the same time I operate among um, appearances. Through my identity as and as part of life, I'm inseparably connected to all the ways life expresses. The physical senses allow me to move among the seemingly separate forms and guises. My ability to focus allows, allows me to zoom in on a given appearance in order to explore and get to know it. The essence of the world I see around me is the creative impulse that breathes life into expression and that unites the various ways in which it appears. That was sort of what I wrote down in one of my rounds through the workbook uh, nice. to help me uh, to help me understand you know god is in everything i see that seems such an abstract idea and if i replace the word god with life it it makes it um more approachable more more accessible any Definitely. thoughts uh, yeah i want to well first of all i love that so um the the thought, first thought that came to mind was when you said life Right away, this word just popped right into my head, love. Mm -hmm. uh, if you sub substitute the word love, yes. you could do And that, to me, really brings it, uh, I guess you say, brings it home, as the expression goes. Yeah, because uh, lately, especially going back through these lessons I'm and other things, I'm just absolutely infused with that feeling of love and uh I seem to see it everywhere. Oh, that's <laughs> and lovely. So that, that, I was unexpected, believe me. Because, well, I know also that any understanding we have of love right now is so tiny, minimal, compared to what it really is. But that was, that was one thing that came to mind when you were reading that. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing about lesson, <laughs> lesson 29 is two things. The first one is, um, if you just read the first sentence... And the third, it can be, talk about confusing. The idea for today explains why you can see all purpose in everything. And it explains why nothing you see means anything. <laughs> what that echoed to me, I remember, when I was reading through it, was the introduction. It's, and I'm sure at other points during the lessons, uh, it's going to be reiterated. The part about, uh, you know, some of the ideas the workbook presents you'll find hard to believe Others quite startling. And so it's kind of like uh, giving us reinforcement that it's saying to us, okay, don't worry about it. You're going to get this. Just keep going. Just keep doing them. And uh, I think it's a, a great device that uh, the Holy Spirit has used in this particular lesson and also throughout to keep us going, giving us confidence. Because some, some people really kind of just seem like they speed through the lessons and they, and they really get it the first time around. But I know 
Many, 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 many don't. <laughs> so I'm very grateful for those words. I don't know why I fixated on them, but uh, they're very helpful. Yeah, and you mean that that it takes these tiny steps to to lay yes. it out in front of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm like you, Ardith. I mean, I, I've done the workbook more than a dozen times over the <laughs> no. years. And, and I still come up items that I think, I don't think I've ever understood this and I'm not sure I understand it now. <laughs> or, <laughs> or I'll see something and I go like, um, they must have inserted this after yeah. like my last round because I can't remember reading this at all. <laughs> so it's tricks that your mind plays on, on, on me. But um, yeah, it, 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 there's sort of like a contradiction almost like in, in, in Lion's it Mind. Is. Yeah, yeah, because it is. It explains why, why you can see all purpose. Even well, I think the, the, go ahead. In, they mean nothing. They mean nothing means anything, but you can see purpose. Yeah, I know. But what I did was I realized if you leave out, if you leave out the second sentence, that kind of explains it. Because it, if I reinsert it, it says it explains why nothing is separate by itself or in itself. And at the vision that we have and the illusion is everything is separate. Yeah. Bodies, you know, cars, trees, yeah. everything. Yeah. Situations. So, yeah. So if you if you center on that to explain those other two sentences, the idea explains why you can see all purpose and everything, and it explains why nothing you see means anything. I think it becomes clearer then, because you'll know at that point, and as you get closer to it, that vision becomes one. It becomes unified. We mm -hmm. don't see anything unified now okay and so um, the um, why nothing you see means anything is because we have separated everything exactly yeah okay. exactly at least to yeah. me <laughs> yeah clear, i understand so. it yeah I, I i i guess i glossed over those sentences but i i you're, you're very right so the yeah, sentence you... two explains why that <laughs> is I know. I just real. I just realized it myself. I mean, yeah. I have glossed over so much. So, very helpful. That we, that yeah, it's very helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, in, in paragraph two, we emphasize that the table shares the purpose of the universe. If you have this um, this unified vision, then mm -hmm. of course it would. Yeah, and actually, if you think about it, and this is mind blowing. Uh, if you at that point where you have nothing but unified vision, you don't know you have unified vision. You just are it. <laughs> so, but it's a way to explain to us the inexplicable. Yeah, and I suppose. Us, that, sorry. No, I was just going to say getting us prepared. Those little steps you were talking yes. about before. Yeah, yeah, and then you will let like the, the the final line of of the of the parts that I chose, and then you will not understand how you could ever have found it difficult. Absolutely. That's yeah. the exclamation point. <laughs> For sure. That sums it up. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's turn to um, lesson 30. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the screen, right? So it's it's up to me. No, to, I can't. So I'll, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I selected paragraph one sentences from one, two and five. And the lesson uh, lessons, the lesson title is God is in everything I see because God is in my mind. And so that has to do with the purpose that I can, can see in everything that uh, in and of itself means nothing. Yeah, God is in everything because I see because God is in my mind. The idea for today is the springboard for vision. From this idea will the world open up before you and you will look upon it and see in it what you have never seen before. Nor will what you saw before be even faintly visible to you. So that sort of reiterates the last sentence that we read in the previous lesson. Mm -hmm. Two, today we are trying to use a new kind of projection. We are not attempting to get rid of what we do not like by seeing it outside. Instead, we are trying to see in the world what is in our minds and what we want to recognize is there. Thus, we are trying to join with what we see rather than keeping it apart from us. That is the fundamental difference between vision and the way you see. Again, here, the unify, the unifying principle, right? Instead of keeping mm -hmm. it apart, yeah. And then five, just two sentences. Real vision is not only unlimited by space and distance, 
but it does not depend on the body's eyes at all. The mind is its only source. Yeah. Very deep, very deep. Very deep, what yeah. You, <laughs> what is your, uh, do you mind reading from your, your notes in your book on this okay. one? Or? On this, yeah, I, I can, I can. Here it, it starts, not surprisingly, replace the word God with life or replace it with love uh. or replace it with peace or joy. Joy is in everything I see because joy is in my mind. Peace is in everything I see because peace is in my mind. Light is in everything I see because light is in my mind. The light that shines in me is the same light that shines in everything. Through that recognition, light connects with light and rejoices. And that actually that's not in the book, but <laughs> that's um, what, what creation is. Creation, the, the course explains creation is communication, sharing, right. exchanging. Mm -hmm. So if the light in me meets up with the light in everything I see and connects with it, that's when creation happens. And that's, that's very abstract because we think, we perhaps think of creation like uh, stuff happening <laughs> uh, outside yeah. in the world. But, right. But, but it's in the mind. Everything is in the mind. Everything is. Yeah. That that itself is so startling. I mean, start to finish. Especially if you try if you t if you talk to someone who has not ha been introduced to any of these ideas at all, they look at you like you're completely insane. Call a wagon, take her away. You know, um, what do you mean? I'm not seeing this out there. It's all in my mind. But very, very difficult. Totally. To yeah, it is, but that's that's why this is a, a retraining of our whole way that we understand our experience. You know, I, I find this is a God is in everything I see because God is in my mind, and I get to the point where I am looking at the things on the outside, but bringing that inside because then what it does is it brings it to those issues that we probably tamp down and don't want to face. I guess in, in normal parlance, we'd say in the subconscious mind, um, because throughout the course, we're told and instructed gently to bring everything to the Holy Spirit. Don't yeah. keep anything. And this, this to me is a, is a little bridge to that. Get us into the habit of using the visual, using the light idea, bringing it back into our mind thinking almost like standing there with those little flashlights have a flashlight in your mind and now i'm going to move the flashlight around to see okay what what corner do i have something stuffed in that i need to get at at least that's a visual that helps me so that, that's a good visual because that's what we need to do and, and sometimes we you know it's, it's not always comfortable to be doing that oh but, um, and that's an understatement. You just but, <laughs> not always comfortable. I'll say, um, but it's yeah. A, yeah. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I'm just trying to to call call back the the lesson again. I'm messing this up. I don't know where where it's gone. Oh, it's here. Sorry, because then the, the, the paragraphs that I selected, because one of them actually spoke about. Um, to see what, what is here. Does, line three in paragraph two. Instead, we are trying to see in the world what is in our minds and what we want to recognize is there. Mm -hmm. And so we are directed to look inside. That's what you said, right? And that's what this yeah. sentence said. Mm -hmm. and, and that's because of the principle that what the content of your the quality of the content of your mind is projected outward. And so what you see in the mirror, the quality of, of the images you see in a mirror correspond to the quality of the content of the mind. Yeah, that, that can be a good thing or a scary thing. But yeah, it's something exactly. that we, we have to face anyway. Where you yeah, read and, that. Uh, go, yeah, ahead. go ahead. No, no sorry. You. <laughs> I forgot. It's, we'll explain to anybody who's listening to this later on that uh since it's it's a little different when you got one on the phone and one who's there so we uh always defer to one another because it's it's love so i love yeah. you go ahead yeah i love you too i forgot <laughs> <laughs> the, the holy spirit does not test so we know what that is but no i'm yeah. sorry go ahead if you, if you don't right. remember 
No, no, sorry. I'll, I'll just I'll just read the second set the second the sentence after that. It says, "Thus we are okay. trying to join with what we see rather than keeping it apart from us, because the reason we project it outwards is because we want nothing to do with it." Exactly. That's the yeah. idea, and yep. the idea here is to join with it and so to withdraw the projection and to 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 sort of own the quality of what you're seeing, and and try and find it or find it. Yeah, I suppose so. Look at it inside and then offer it up. That's the promise is that we don't have to fix it ourselves. We offer it up. Yeah, because real vision, um, it says down here in four, is not limited to concepts such as near and far. And I don't know, I have a feeling it's like dual or triple purpose that this is going on. But the one that hit me the first was getting us to face those things. And the idea of inner vision rather than outer vision is something that is pretty foreign a lot of times, uh, depending on where we are in our stage of life, um, what we are in the calmer stages of life, say. We look at those things, shine the flashlight inside, and we see some really nice things. And, oh, I don't mind talking about that. I don't mind bringing that up to the Holy Spirit. Here it is. But in those periods of our lives that are maybe we consider tragic or difficult, um, we really need to have this reminder, I think, because otherwise the whole thing is taking us to the true vision. And it's, step, again, steps. And this, I think, is a real important one. The thing is, of course, even though it's uncomfortable and even though you said it works both ways when it's, when it's, a, when it's a happy thought or, or when it's an uncomfortable thought, mm -hmm. it, it does offer the way out. Because if, if, if we weren't aware of, of that, of the dynamic of that projection there you know we wouldn't even know that something could be done about it you could ch we wouldn't even know that you could change your mind and thereby change your fate really mm -hmm. you understand what exactly. i'm saying exactly yeah. yeah oh absolutely very yeah. very clearly you're mm -hmm. absolutely right yeah. yeah good one all right let's look at the next lesson 31 i've selected sentences from paragraph one, four, and five. The reason that I've selected them is, you, you probably know Ardith, but for, for those who think why she's selecting those sentences, is because all the other sentences often um, instruct how to do the lesson on the given day. And of course, now that we are looking at seven together, we, we don't really have to, uh, to read those instructions again. So here mm -hmm. we go, lesson 31. I am not the victim of the world I see. Oh, I love that one. I just love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Number one, today's idea is the introduction to your declaration of release. Hi, Derek. Derek hello. joined. Oh, hey, hello, Derek. Hi. Can hello. you see my share screen? I can. Okay, good. Well, welcome. <laughs> um, um, again, uh, the first sentence that I selected. Today's idea is the introduction to your declaration of release. Then from paragraph four, you are making a declaration of independence in the name of your own freedom. And in your freedom lies the freedom of the world. Now, and then from paragraph five, the idea for today is also a particularly useful one to use as a response to any form of temptation that may arise. It is a declaration that you will not yield to it and put yourself in bondage. I love that sentence. I'm not the victim of the world, I see. Before you read your, um, which I hope you'll continue to do, read from your book on okay. this. But, but before you do, I, before I forget it, my mind, I forget things easily these days. Um, before I forget it, there's a word in there, in that sentence five, or the paragraph five, that uh, gets, is flummoxed a lot of students of the course. And it, I'd like to hear the idea about what you interpret it as, and also Derek, now that you're here. And that word is temptation. Because um, particularly in the Christian space of all different denominations, uh, that word has a lot of connotations that uh, may or may not apply with this word. Now, not necessarily have to be in the context of this sentence, although it can be, but what are your thoughts about how the Course interprets that word temptation if you have any do you do you have an idea 
Yes and no. And now I guess I'm I'm asking for somebody else's okay. input. I'll be happy All to right. give mine Good. later. But... All righty. Shall I, Derek? Yeah, go for it. Okay. What I, I think it's very general. It's the wrong mindedness or the right mindedness, thinking with the ego or thinking with the Holy Spirit. So in any form that you're tempted to think with the ego, that's how I read it. Yeah, that would be close to mine as well. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but I've heard you would some of the some of the uh, explanations can get kind of wild, and sometimes a lot of the, I guess, so-called baggage you could say from other mm. teachings comes over. So it's very, it's actually very clear and very the way you describe it, and very good to know that and keep that in mind because that word shows up often at different points. Yeah, in the course. it does. Yeah. yeah, and I think at some points it's explained. And that's yes. why I remembered this this um, explanation from from reading mm -hmm. it. I can't remember exactly where, but that's yeah, okay. you know, it's a funny thing. You know, the, lots of teachers and lots of um, interpretations, and the the course community, and it, it always makes me wonder, like, what 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 is it to me? I have the course. I, when when <laughs> I'm puzzled, I go back to the course. You know, it's yeah. uh, and especially now with the search function. If there's, uh -huh. I, we could actually type in temptation and, and pull up a, a various um, quotes that that have it, and and it would shed light on it. Or and if it w doesn't, well, it's 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 something to to study then and to to work on. Hi, I think Manu. Up... Manu is here. Manu is here. Oh, Hi. good, Manu. Yeah. I think before Hi. I forget it, I think you brought up a very important point, uh, Johanna, and that was that. Um, no matter how many times, sometimes we quote verbatim using this wonderful search function, which I love it, um, but no matter how many times we quote the actual words from the course, someone will come in and dispute it or try to twist it. And try. I'm, this is not a criticism. It's just an observation. And so sometimes even the simplest terms can become complex I love it too when I, if I feel myself confused by something, I almost nine times out of ten, if I go back to references to it that I can do now by pulling it up on our on our uh, online version, uh, it clears it all up. It if does. I just sit with it quietly and and let all that other stuff go away from my mind, and I I try to kind of gently give that little note to different individuals who seem to be uh, perplexed by it, but. Um, if they're receptive to it, that's fine. Otherwise, I leave it to the spirit. Well, I leave the spirit anyway, but I will back off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And what I what I'll do sometimes, I'll just go back to my copy of. Um, I have got a real old copy, and and all my rounds of reading, I've made, you know, in the margin. I can, you, know, you can see it. I'm and, uh -huh. and I've put in with with um, pencil all kinds of extra <laughs> thoughts that note. I had. And so, yeah, when something puzzles me, I'll go back in the book and say, what, what does the course say? And what did I think about that subject, yeah. you know, the, the last time I, I read it? And that's, that sometimes sheds light on it, too. I, the, the, the whole idea is that the answers are in the course. We don't have yep. to, we don't have, a, we don't need a teacher. We really, you know, it's, it's great if they're around and if you resonate with a teacher, but it's the course itself is the teacher. Oh, and the of course, one the teacher spirit. is Speaks, yeah, speaks through it. What, I, I, I didn't mean to stop you because I'm, hello, Manu, and I'm so glad Derek's here, but I yeah. just, you had been reading from your book, and do you have something that you could share with us from this before we I, I would there? like to, but I see that two people have raised their hands. I, 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 oh, I, good. I who, okay. Who, ha, who had their hands up first? So you guys have to battle it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Derek, Derek, Derek did. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say two things. And the first one was that for myself, um, earlier on and still to this day, 20 years later, uh, I do find myself with level confusion. So level two, the dream world, uh, I'll take a word like temptation and I'll start thinking about it in terms of, you know, this, this ego world that I'm caught in and miss the point often when the course is speaking from level one uh, of the right mind. Um, so, so, you know, one sentence that appears to be perfectly clear, I will read it, misunderstand it, misinterpret it. Um, 
And sometimes a group like this or talking to Diane uh, in her class or something. Um, and sometimes if I just meditate on it, I, I will realize that I was thinking at the wrong level. Um, but I still mix things up to this day uh, where I, I feel like I don't understand what they're getting at. Um, or, I'll, or I'll have arguments with the statement and I'll have my reasons for why I don't agree with it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. That's Yeah, well, I, I think you're not the only one, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> so thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. And what I was going to say is like, uh, I think it was either through email or maybe in the Zoom, Derek and I were saying, as we have all said, I'm sure that, you know, every year and every time we look at the lesson again, there's so much more that emerges from it than before, right? Yeah. And that's obviously, one would hope it's a testament to our growth and how we are starting to look at and increasingly through the eyes of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and of course, the course is the true source, but then not really either because it's still a symbol. And so, uh, you know, we still go back to the master interpreter and the master teacher, which is also obvious. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. and the thing is, so the discussions and interpretations and allegiances, they, they pull you away, don't they? They pull you yeah. away from your inner teacher. So um, I think something came to me as Manu was speaking, uh, and this isn't new. But I've had I had this introduced to me a long time ago, and it's been really helpful uh, when you come upon things like and Derek, you're certainly not alone <laughs> in uh, having battle with various things in this book. But um, I have found uh, very definitely at the suggestion of someone long ago that reading out loud the lesson mm. quietly, fairly slowly, there's a different, there's something different about it. And I'm not the only one. I've, I've spoken to others about it, and they agree. There's just something about it. Uh, you have to do it when you're quiet, first of all, not in an agitated state or not prepared to sit there and do it and not look at it like, oh, I have to do this in order to get clarity, but just a, a kind of a welcoming way. And hearing, hearing it in your own illusory voice is, this, I don't know, there's just something to it. Just, I know I, it works for me. It does mm. for me, too. It does mm -hmm. for me. I often found, find it if I read a section of the text silently, I, I finish the page and I have no clue what what about what I've been reading. About. Been there. Whereas if I if I read out loud as if I'm reading to a child, I read out loud as if I'm reading to a child, slowly I'll, and very uh, deliberately. I'll try that. I've never actually done that. Interestingly, and really, for, yeah, <laughs> you have such a lovely voice. You should hear it. Oh, your voice is so <laughs> wonderful. I would think you'd want to hear it. <laughs> Thank you for that compliment. And so what I um, find myself doing is becoming really clear and centered and then reading that sentence or that paragraph until I really think I got it. And, you know, with full mm -hmm. attention. So but the mind's not wandering. It's making, yeah. So for that was uh, until I heard you say that, heard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, that was my way of reading it out loud. Well, it's beautiful. I mean, in the way, you know, there's no one way. I think we learn this as we go through the course. Every one of us uh, receives instruction as it's appropriate for us at a moment. Um, so when we have something like this, I mean, your, your way of doing it is really good. Uh, I, I've tried it a few times, and I, I, sometimes I can do it and sometimes not. Sometimes I've done what uh, jo Johanna has done, read it silently all through, but I usually have the same experience she does. So, but at any rate, thank you for sharing that one, because any tool that we can get that we help one and, another to – yeah, go ahead. I just realized, Ardith – that the uh -huh. reason I don't utter the sentences and the words out aloud is because almost always 
I'm either reading in the morning when my wife is by my side or in the evening, you know, before bed when my wife is also by my side. And ah. <laughs> um, she she is not a course student and we have our own history here. And it's a, it's been an amazing forgiveness uh, story and lesson where she would always uh, poo-poo my sp- spiritual <laughs> pursuits. And now she is getting into that same vein herself. And oh. but <laughs> nevertheless, she's not a course student. So, you know, it wouldn't sit right by her. Well, see, that's perfect then, because then the way that you do it, and it, it works for you, uh, you already have a way, and it's perfectly understandable. How how gentle and thoughtful of you, anyway, I, I, you know, <laughs> to whatever, to stay away from trying to force something. Mm. And, or tell her to put earplugs in or something like that. Yeah, right. yeah, but still, then that's a condition that you're putting on someone. So, yeah, you know, no, rather you than do rather than do that, you might want to stuff their earplugs in their ear, but, you know, someone has to be receptive and the, the moment has to be right. And it sounds like you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leadings and the way you do it sounds just perfect. I'm going to try it myself again. Well. Through the day when I'm working like I am right now uh, outside this meeting, um, I'm going to take time and read out some um, lessons out loud, especially like, you know, uh, what we are seeing right now on the screen, Ardith, is lesson Mm -hmm. 31. And it says, I'm not the victim of the world I see. And, you know, just like any affirmation, the, the little willingness saying it out loud has a lot of meaning and reverber- reverberation and therefore a vibratory impact. Mm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, That's actually sure. levels one and two combined. Right? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, I think. So, yeah, I think so too. It, I'm not the helps. victim of the world I see. I'm not yeah. the victim of the world I'm- I see. <laughs> I'm not the victim of the world I see. Okay, Johanna, come on. <laughs> okay, I... let's move to lesson 32. <laughs> She's not going to say it. Okay. All right. <laughs> I've already, I've read it out loud. I know. I'm kidding you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, does, do I have a volunteer for lesson, to, the, 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 for the sentences that I selected for lesson 32? Derek. Sure. Lesson 32, I have invented the world I see. Today, we are continuing to develop the theme of cause and effect. You are not the victim of the world you see because you invented it. You can give it up as easily as you made it up. You will see it or not see it as you wish. While you want it, you will see it. When you no longer want it, it will not be there for you to see. The idea for today, like the preceding ones, applies to your inner and outer worlds, which are actually the same. Can, can I say something about this? Sure, go ahead. This was my initial level two, level one confusion many years ago when I read this, uh, maybe, um, was I was reading this and I was thinking, you know, in some sort of enlightened meditative state, if I let go of my concepts, you know, I would not, I, I, I would stop seeing the world and all of a sudden it would be a bunch of colors like a mushroom trip <laughs> as I transcended and have, had a revelatory experience. And yes, maybe that those sort of experiences happen, happen to people on the spiritual path at some point, um, you know, randomly or at some level of development that perhaps is far beyond where I'm at. Um, So then what I thought, okay, if this isn't talking about that necessarily, then I thought, um, man, if if I see a a, a man beating a woman or screaming at a woman in a parking lot, which I did see years ago, um, one emotional reaction and one interpretation would be, I can't believe that jerk. He's, he has no right. I need to call the police. I need to get in there and you know, but basically judgment against this bad person. Um, 
And now I'm starting to realize that that whole interpretation is my invention of this violent world that I'm seeing where a bad person is attacking a victim. All those are interpretations. That's the world that I'm seeing. That's the world that I created. And as I open up my mind to a more loving interpretation, I might still see the fact. Here's a male human being yelling angrily at a female human being like i'll still see what is literally going on to my body eyes but i might be filled with compassion and i might see this traumatized wounded man for example who reaction to who, who knows what childhood beating could have put him in this emotional state i might step in and say hey excuse me sir yeah i, I just might try to get between the two but there won't be any judgment or attack or on him there, you know, it will just, so that's my latest take on mm -hmm. what this lesson is speaking of. Um, I'd be curious what you guys thought. Manu, you've got your hand up. Yeah, that struck such a bell for me. And I wanted to thank you, Derek, for bringing up that interpretation because I've had the same uh, situation in the past. And I think it's one of the biggest blocks we have to living uh, the course. And what I mean by that is like when I was growing, I grew up in India before coming to the States. And in India, there's this uh, tradition, religious tradition where true self-realization or true knowledge or true achievement uh, enlightened base achievement is only possible, it seemed, through a vision, through that big uh, explosion of light. And it, it's also tied very closely with the whole concept of the Kundalini and the chakras and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I grew up with that. And, and my life's been perfect in terms of slowly uh, growing as designed by God and by my higher self in terms of, you know, wherever it needs to go. But if I were to look at it from an egoic standpoint, I would say that the biggest block was this expectation of having that explosive vision. Mm -hmm. And, and that in, in a small way is supported by the course as well, because, you know, they talk about uh, light the, fringes the and lights and, you know, and of course the, uh, there's a couple more things that I'm forgetting right now, but, and once I realized, realized that, that's when I was able to make greater strides because this very normal, ordinary moment without judgment or interpretation and therefore with ultimate forgiveness is exactly what reality is. And it reminded me of this, uh, paragraph that I always, among a few others that I always keep in my uh, inbox to read. I'm sure you've come across this many times, if I, if I may read through that. It references the, the holy instant. It goes like this, you could live forever in the holy instant, beginning now and reaching to eternity, but for a very simple reason. Do not obscure the simplicity of this reason. For if you do, it will only, it will be only because you prefer not to recognize it and not to let it go. The simple reason, simply stated, is this. The holy instant is a time in which you receive and give perfect communication. This means, however, that it is a time in which your mind is open both to receive and give. And the last sentence is, it is a recognition that all minds are in communication. Um, it therefore seeks to change nothing, but merely to accept everything. Lovely. And where is that from? Uh, we can look it up. I can look okay. it up and share okay. because it's just a snippet that I have that among many other snippets down. in my okay. email. I, and yeah. I didn't put the reference in. That's okay. But it's, of course, all right. 
Yeah, it's lovely. Wow. When, when, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say thank you, Manu, because just me being loving in any situation with anybody, I could, prior to this, the course, and I could just overlook that as, oh, big deal. You know, when, when it is the, uh, the, the, the revelation or the seeing of light fringes or light episodes or th that, yeah, that is whatever, whatever those Kriyas are, but it's not the point. It's the perfect love, which I might be tripping over and not even noticing to value it. I agree, Derek. The perfect love and, and the non-judgment that Manu mentioned. Yeah. And, and the course speaks about guiltlessness and innocence. And if, if, if you communicate with, with, with others, like we are doing now, and those elements are present, that's the light to me. Mm -hmm. I just got a vision of um, a, 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 an individual who had been incarcerated not a particular one. This is just a general. And uh, the trial was finished. And that individual was given a sentence. In this case, it was a life sentence. And from the back of the room, a woman comes forward silently. And they acknowledge one another in their looks. And she goes up to him and holds him just holds him. And it turns out that that woman is the mother of the man that he murdered. In that moment, I just felt, felt, how do I feel? I felt that communication hmm. that very strongly. No, no light flashes in that one. None. But light flashes in the heart hmm. and the second not vision that i had was i was definitely a child of the 70s the 60s and 70s mm -hmm. and i will always admit i experimented a great deal with various substances shall we say and the second thing that came to my mind was a very very incredible what they used to call trip hmm. and I think because of that and another experience I had, not drug-related at all, has just given me a little bit of an insight to this. When I get upset that I'm not seeing those flashes of light, I just remember this. And it was, of course, it was a, some kind of a, if you take it scientifically uh, in our illusion, of course, there are explanations as to what happens in the brain and all that when you when you take particular substances, but the bottom line was the experience of it is unlike anything that you have at all in everyday life. And I will never forget it, ever, ever. Um, but it didn't really help anything. It shows why we need to go through this process through the book here mm. and really absorb it, because that kind of experience, I remember saying to myself, oh, I understand everything now, and I'm sure I did. But when it wore off, <laughs> I couldn't remember a thing. And <laughs> the ego was still there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, I, I don't know. These two things are probably totally unrelated. I don't know why they came up. I always ask Holy Spirit, please don't let me just go on with something that is not pertinent. So I'm just throwing it out there and thinking maybe someone somewhere will relate and be able Very to pertinent. put it. Put it's it into important. this, uh, the context of this particular lesson. Yeah. Yeah, it um, reminds me of one more principle that I hold dear. Um, well, first of all, what I was going to say is uh, you just uttered perfection. It's perfection because anything that's, um, I'll put it this way, anything that's allowed to happen automatically means it was the will of God. And if it's the will of God, even if we can't really understand or comprehend it, uh, it's the will of God. Yeah. 
Can you repeat that first sentence that you said? About when, um, when something happens? If it's and been, if and any, anything that's happening. So there's, there's a Buddhist uh, quote that I should look up and find you the exact words, but it basically goes like, if it's happened, then that was the only way it could have happened. And, or in other words, if, if it's, what I said was, if it's been allowed to happen, that allowed means happen. God, God allowed it to happen. The larger will allowed it to happen. Therefore, it is a larger will, which we cannot necessarily comprehend in our microscopic view of everything. And how does that relate to the, the, the world being a projection of the mind? It's, it was a necessary step for the mind to go through. Is that what you mean? Yeah, let me grok that. Let me really think about uh, this amazing question that you've asked. And, you know, others can jump in in the meantime. You know, I've, I've actually struggled for meaning on why things are happening at all. And I think we have myths on, you know, why things happen the way they're happening. And one of the myths, I, I'm still calling it a myth um, because it's still a story. So the course says, we remember not to laugh, right? Which is very significant for it to say, remember not to laugh versus we forgot to laugh. So we remembered not to laugh to me signifies that we chose for a moment to not laugh. It didn't just happen. We, through our willpower said, we are going to remember to not laugh so that we could have this other experience. And at that moment was the world born based on our desire, which was, so that's one amazing way that the course describes why things happened the way they happen. And there's a few other alternate views on why things happened. And I don't know, that, that's some of the thoughts that are coming to my mind. Well, well on... what, I, what I'm thinking now is everything happens for your own best interests. That sort of echoes what you were saying. And that's that's what that's in the course. That's one in one of the lessons. Everything happens yeah. for my own best interests, and I yes. have no clue what my own best interests are. And that's why everything is so puzzling. Also, if that's why I have to give the... it up. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say. Also, throw into the mix: there is no world. So then we can ponder on that one, along with all the others. And now, now we need a teacher to explain all this. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, also, one thing this points out to me, that these wonderful sh lesson sharings are not always a guarantee that we're going to come to conclusion. I love where Manus is bringing up things to, to consider after. Yes, and I, I, that's, that's another beautiful purpose that's given us for this. So. What, what's coming to me from this, uh, this part of this discussion is that it's kind of like, what, what thought do I hold in mind? that brings me peace or acceptance of, of what I'm experiencing or what I'm observing. And if that thought is everything is for my best interests, that's an arbitrary set of words. If, I, if I'm like, oh, that, that I can let go of any judgment because I believe that everything is for my own best interests. If, that, if I can buy that, it brings me peace of mind, perfect. If the set of words is, God allowed this to happen. Therefore, I don't understand it, but it is perfect. If that I'll accept into my mind and find peace and be able to relax, then that is a perfect mythology. And, and other religions and other uh, metaphysics or m myths that explain things, uh, the, the gods came in chariots, whatever that, if, if it, uh, brings that peace to your mind so that you no longer judge it's um achieved the uh Prompt the purpose all the, Prompt yeah. all the question yeah mm. something that neutralizes judgment or renders it irrelevant or something yeah basically puts you into perfect communication which is uh, a, a poised mind which is receiving and giving just that love that spiritual back and forth without anything else going on. 
in our minds at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have an experience. I guess maybe this is a holy instant. Uh, I've had one just about four weeks ago with someone. Um, there was no barrier. There was absolutely none. There was this incredible, absolute oneness. And my heart just flew open. I'm serious. It really did. Mm. And I realized so many things that I had never, in an instant, in just an instant, the same instant that we denied God and, and brought ourselves into this, this place, this thing, this experience. But it was a good one. Well, I interpret it as good. <laughs> but it was so revelatory. It was so huge. I, I don't even know where I was going with that. <laughs> I just... I just, I don't well, know. Manuba's talking about perfect communication. And uh, yeah. course, the holy instant is an instant of perfect communication. Yes. And I don't know what kind of expectations that we all have over that. But I guess I was saying, I wasn't expecting that. Now, maybe that isn't the way it would be understood. But I get the feel, I, I just know, I, I just sense that that exactly was, was an example of it. And I'm sure there have been many more. And I'm sure there'll be many more that will have other things aspects to it but the bottom line yes is absolutely it's an instance and a proof it's a gift a proof of the fact that we are one mind that we are really in communication and when it happens what happened to me was an absolute increase in love mm -hmm. not just for the one that i was engaging with the one my mirror i guess i would say but for a message, it was a message I received, that I can have that same kind of love, which I am, with all. Mm -hmm. And from that moment forward, I have, that, that's one of the things I have asked to be allowed to have. And that is a constant reminder on a daily basis that that's exactly the way I want to see all my brothers and sisters in everything. And it's, it's happening. It's happening. Yes, yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. that is so beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So um, perhaps that's a one, that's the most lovely note we could imagine to cl close our session today. <laughs> oh. We've come at we've come at the top of the hour. Um, could we go? Right. Could we maybe make sure that next time that maybe make a note somewhere that we could have a quick, quick, quick look back at the ones that I made us talk over. <laughs> Sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. Oh, the one, the, the one that, we, that we didn't get to, the lessons. Oh, we yeah, didn't get to. that that just, just happened. Kind of a quick, yeah, yeah. That that I suppose if if next week we were to start with the ones that we didn't get to today, we won't get to more. <laughs> we're gonna be <laughs> so be far cumulative. behind. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just have to uh, uh, accept it as 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 um, guidance yes. that we were to we were supposed to be looking at 29 through 32. And uh, right. next year we'll 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 go <laughs> reverse order. <laughs> this time next year. Well, yeah. this is going to be our assignment then. I know what the last two uh, that we didn't get to is it two? Yes. Yeah. Two. Yes. Yeah. Two. Yeah. I'm going to do it as a not an experiment. That was a <laughs> uh, as as a as a practice as a one time practice and see how it goes. I'm going to take those two lessons. I'm going to read them through. I'm going to do them every single way that we had had brought it out earlier, uh, Johanna reading the whole thing silently, and then <clears throat> Manu centering and, and reading or attempting to do what you did in my own fashion, then reading it out loud, and then sitting quietly for a minute. And I want to take that as a substitute for the fact that we didn't get through them here. Oh, wow. Love so. it. Beautiful. And, and you, you don't see that as a punishment? No <laughs> punishment! Oh. My gosh, no! <laughs> that would be a hope... punishment for me. <laughs> oh no, no, no! Well, listen, you—if you feel that, then it's not for you. That's one oh, really? beautiful thing about this course <laughs> <laughs> that it tells it's that sorry. all the way through. Yeah, yeah. no pressure. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. So let's close off with a prayer, and um, I chose, and I'll, it doesn't do my. Okay, I'll, I'll stop share. Why doesn't it respond to my stop share button? Oh, there you go. Um, yeah, 
share screen. Okay. Yes. It's all in here. <laughs> we love it. Mm -hmm. And and now I go, I click this and it should come up. Yeah. No, it doesn't come up. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, I thought it would come up. It doesn't. But but here, here, this is the one I would like mm. to, to read. I just love this one as a closing statement. It's the, the text of the final five lessons, 361 to 365. Do I have a volunteer for reading? Manu. Shall I read it? Oh, Manu? Or you, either way. Oh, you. Okay, I'll read. This holy instant would I give to you. Be you in charge, for I would follow you, certain that your direction gives me peace. And if I need a word to help me, he will give it to me. If I need a thought, that will he also give. And if I need but stillness and a tranquil open mind, these are the gifts I will receive of him. He is in charge by my request and he will hear and answer me because he speaks for God, my father and his holy son. Amen. 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 Thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. I love you all so much. <laughs> Love you too, Lord. Love um, you. And now I need to stop the recording and I don't know where the button is. <laughs> I think I can do it for you. Bye, everybody else. Would you? Yeah. yeah.